It is six o'clock. We will call the Sartell City Council meeting to order for Monday, September 11th. Please rise for Pledge of Allegiance. Also, the next item on our agenda is the agenda review and adoption. Look for a motion. I would like to uh, make a motion to maybe add to the agenda this evening a discussion on um, the golf course from the park zoning perspective. We had talked about that in the past as maybe an item for us to add. I don't know if that's old or new business, but uh, just some discussion time for us as council to discuss that. Um, I guess direction old or new. Um, do you want to just include it as a part of the, we could put it under old, but then kind of in line or right after the purchase agreement amendments, does that work? But, and before it would move the Northwest water treatment plan improvements down one item. Is that fine? Just keep it in order with. That, do we need to, I guess maybe technical, but. Just do amend the agenda for um, 9B to be um, golf course zoning. Okay. And then 9C would be Northwest Water Treatment Plant. Does that work? Okay. Um, Jed, would you make that motion? Or is that the motion you're making? Yes. Okay. So there's a motion to amend the agenda to add uh, zoning discussion for item B, 9B and moving Northwest Water Treatment Plant to 9C. Is there a second on that motion? I'll second. Motion and a second. Um, I guess we can save discussion for that point in time. Oh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, uh, all in favor of the Amended agenda to add item 9B, which will be discussion on zoning, and 9C will be the North uh, Water Treatment Plant improvements. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That carries, and we'll get to it at that point. All right, next up is open forum public comment. Um, we have one registered today, uh, Jim and or Diane Breichelman, if you can step to the podium, you have three minutes to uh, testify to council. Good evening, Mayor and council members. My name is Jim Breichelman, my wife Diane and I live at 32827 River Oaks Lane, next to the now infamous Mr. Carwash. As you know, Mr. Carwash has been in operation for nine months now. And during this time period, Diane and I have identified several issues that are of a concern to us as they impact us directly. We feel the need to meet with appropriate city staff to begin a discussion regarding these issues in the hopes of a mutual solution. All of these issues in question, incidentally, are guided by the conditional use permit, an agreement signed by both the city of Sartell and Mr. Carwash. And so to be brief, will someone on the city staff please call us soon to schedule a meeting at City Hall. Diane and I are both retired, so our schedules are open. We hope that that meeting will perhaps stimulate some discussion at a regular council meeting in the future. We appreciate your help and support so far, and we hope that it will continue. So if you would kindly call me at 320-282-8615, we would appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Council, that's the only uh, registered participant for tonight. 
Moving on to approval of city council minutes, we have August 14th regular meeting and August 14th special meeting. Look for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? No second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. On to consent agenda, we have items A through I. I would take a motion to approve or if anyone has one to pull. I'd make a motion to approve A through I. We have a motion to approve A through I. Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. We have two public hearings tonight. First one um, is uh, for preliminary and final plat. Kick it over to you, Carrie. Good evening, Mayor and members of the council. Before you is the preliminary and final plat for Mayor Tierra Mila plat. This was reviewed by the Planning Commission last Tuesday. Planning Commission did recommend approval contingent upon addressing staff comments. Since then, um, the comments have been addressed. Um, the preliminary and final plat consists of two lots, so essentially it's um, a platted um, subdivision, one lot being just over four acres and the other lot just above a half an acre, total of five acres. There are no city utilities um, to this site or plat, um, so they did provide designs um, and locations for the septics on each property, uh, each platted parcel, I should say. Um, there, they will be required to um, pay park dedication fees, just like any other development would. Um, the other trunk fees are waived since there's no utilities there. Rob, can you go to the next one, please? The next, thank you. Um, perfect, thanks. Some of the Planning Commission questions and comments were um, regarding the access to the lot one you see there, and that will be accessed on the ingress egress easement on the left there on the screen, um, and also questions about existing sheds on the property, mainly on lot one there, there are existing sheds. So that would be a legal non-conforming lot at this time, um, and they do have plans to build a future home there, so that would come into compliance as long as they don't exceed the two accessory structures that are currently there. With that, I would take any questions that you would have. Otherwise, our requested action tonight is to open the public hearing and then um, um, make a motion second to approve the preliminary and final plan. Council, any questions for staff before we open the public hearing? Just one, Carrie, can you point out where the access points are for each of those lots? Yes, so for lot two, I, I did put this in front of each of your spots as well. For lot two, it will be via the existing driveway um, in the lower bottom right there. And that's a existing driveway. And then for the lot one, it will be on that 33 foot on the left side of the lot one there, you can see there's an easement, so that will be how it will be accessed for that lot one. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to testify on the preliminary and final plat, please step forward. Second chance, anyone wishing to testify, please step forward. Third and final call, anyone wishing to testify on the preliminary and final plot, please step forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Council, any follow-up questions or discussion? I have one. Go. Thanks. Carrie, on the back lot, back side of lot one, um, there seems to be some, how far back is the buildable, is that green line, the edge of the buildable area with the water setback for the water? Or? Yeah, so um, at the back there of the lot, it's the, there's a dash and a dot there at the bottom 
or at the back, that would be where you would be able to build however the septic locations would determine um, the proximity to those. It's lower in the, about in the middle, you can see where the proposed septic sites are. So I would assume they would build nearby those septic areas just for that purpose. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, I would look for a motion to approve the preliminary and final plots. I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Second public hearing is for preliminary and final plot of Eagle Edition. Good evening again. Um, the Eagle Edition plot is before you for um, approval. The Planning Commission did review this last Tuesday um, and recommended approval contingent upon addressing staff comments. We are still working through some of those comments with the surveyor at this time, so that would be the same ask tonight. Some of those comments are just um, easements and other other comments regarding the culvert that's there and um, some specifications on that. So we're working through that, but anticipate getting those comments reserved relatively soon. So before you, um, it's similar in the previous item that it is a platted lot split, one lot being just over 10 acres and the other lot being 2.25 acres. There is platted right of way that you can see there for 19th Avenue. This um, also does not have city utilities to the site so they, they will have the same um, septic, they'll have septics and wells on both of these lots. They will also pay park dedication fees just like the other plat um, per lot. Um, some of the comments that Planning Commission had, Rob, if you can just go to the next slide, please. Some of their comments were similar in the other one. Um, this is a shared access via the existing um, driveway to the garage that is existing there right now. We did not want to allow another access off of 19th just due to um, the amount of traffic on that on that road. So it'll be a shared driveway access. You can see there there's a proposed uh, ingress egress easement to accommodate that other driveway to lot two. Um, and there was questions just regarding that shared access and what that looks like. So we will require them to plat that easement on the plat on the final plat, and we're working through that comment. Wetland delineation was completed as well for this lot since there's significant wetlands um, towards the top of um, the screen there. So that will get added in a drainage and utility easement as well. So um, tonight the ask would be to approve the preliminary and final plat just a contingent upon addressing staff comments as we're still working through those. With that, I would take any questions that you would have. Council, any questions before we open the public hearing? Seeing none, we'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to testify on the preliminary and final plot of Eagle Edition, please step forward. Second call, anyone wishing to testify? Third and final call, anyone wishing to testify on the preliminary and final plot for Eagle Edition? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Council, any discussion? Seeing none, we'll look for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve uh, Eagle Edition um, pending outcome of staff comments or resolution of staff comments. We have a motion. Is there a second? Okay. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. On to new business. We have the 2024 preliminary levy and budget. Yes, good evening, Mayor Menzer and Council. The levy figures have not changed from the special meeting, but I wanted to cover the preliminary levy at a high level for transparency and touch on the budget book at the end. 
So levy, it's how much the city wants to collect in property taxes, and it's set after we set our expenditure budget, our non-property tax budget, and there's always a gap, and you fill that gap with the levy. The levy's projected to increase uh, just under $1 million, or 9.6% from 2023 to 2024. And you can see here that capital funds have increased nearly triple since 2020 to mitigate future debt. The general fund being the biggest levy at 7.1 million, when we look at the landscape here, you can see a majority of it is people related, salaries and overtimes and benefits. So there's a large influence when negotiating union contracts and adding personnel. Here are the positives and negatives uh, financially from the levy. Um, being that our general fund is a majority of our levy, most of the increases are derived from salaries and benefits. Uh, as you can see there, the top number at 608,000 or 9%. On the positive side, uh, we have an LGA reappropriation of 71%, increase year over year, and a couple other non-recurring revenues carrying us in 2024 so that we're able to finish balanced. The variables between the preliminary levy that we're looking to approve tonight and the final levy in December, uh, most of which uh, relate to union negotiations. And uh, we haven't received any health insurance renewals for 2024 yet. So these are subject to change for the final budget hearing. Tax capacity, that's the aggregate of all tax capacities within the city of Sartell. Uh, it also includes adjustments for homestead tax increment and other adjustments allowed by the county and state. The bar chart is the tax capacity in millions and the line chart is the change year over year. In 2023, we had a 17.5% tax capacity change, which was abnormal. But in 2024, we're projecting a 9.6% change, which is somewhat in line with the prior three years. So when you take our tax levy number of 10.1 million divided by tax capacity of 24.3 million, you get the 41.5% tax rate, which is consistent with the 2023 41.5% tax rate, thus being a 0% tax rate increase year over year which is in line with our financial policies. This chart shows area tax capacity rates from 2016 to 2023. Uh, we are the bottom line there in dark blue. And as you can see, over the past six or seven years, it's been around a 0% tax rate increase, uh, which we will continue into 2024. So next steps tonight is to adopt the preliminary levy. Um, shortly after, we'll release the preliminary budget book. Um, between November 11th and November 24th, the audit co county auditor will prepare and send parcel specific notices. So the levy that we approve tonight will be sent to uh, residents in their preliminary tax statement for 2024. Um, and then we'll certify the final levy December 11th, which in the consent agenda we had set the final levy for December 11th. And just to note, when we set the proposed or preliminary levy, that when it comes time for the final levy, we cannot increase it any more than the levy that we set today. ClearGov budget book, I believe Anna had sent this to you a couple of weeks ago, um, but it really ties our levy, long-term financial planning, policies, goals into a very easy to navigate, easy to understand budget book. Um, it'll be available on our website within the press release shortly after our meeting, barring any, uh, no major changes to our proposed levy. Um, I also think it'll be a great way for residents and other stakeholders to engage with our proposed budget. So I'm hoping a lot of engagement to come from our 2024 preliminary budget book. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Council, any questions on the proposed preliminary levy and budget? Seeing none, I'll, I'll reiterate that um, there's still a few unknowns, but this is our max 
uh, as we've all gone through before. So this is our max. We'll go out to the residence, and then um, we'll continue the work as we firm up those numbers. And December 11th is when we'll bring forward the uh, official levy for 2024. So without that, I would look for a motion to adopt the 2024 preliminary levy. I'll make a motion to approve the preliminary levy. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. On to old business. Uh, first up is purchase agreement amendments. Mayor, members of the council, you have before you uh, multiple amendments to the purchase agreement for Pine Ridge Golf Course, as well as one related amendment to the draft development agreement and a subsequent uh, assignment and assumption agreement due to the modified 3-2 motion on May 22nd. I'll provide historical context and then I'll go through each amendment individually and allow for questions one at a time just to try to keep us organized. Real um, quick, real quick um, oh, sorry. We've got a couple different handouts. What is each person supposed to get? Grab one and pass it down. There's varying. They're all oh. the same in mine. I think you. <laughs> Did it staple all of the? It stapled page one all to me. All of she page, got page one all two. Got it. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll put one. On. It's the exhibit E, Ryan. Take one, pass. Take one, pass it down. So it looks like these. All oh, these renderings aren't even. Okay. You, you, let's help Carrie can resort them. Okay. She'll Sorry. know what it, it's the. We got new computers and the printer isn't collating. Collating correctly. Thank you. You'll you'll know what it did, Carrie. Carrie, I got paid. <laughs> then you guys will not have to worry about it. Um, good. Yep. Awesome. Sorry. Uh, the um, the amendments have been managed by our city attorney since May twenty second, and then provided to our council for review on August thirty first first, and brought forward for consideration tonight on the eleventh. Staff has not been involved in the drafting or negotiation of these amendments, and out of full transparency, we did ask for any questions from City Council in advance of tonight to be prepared for responses that would allow us to not require our legal team to be present. So I just wanted to make a call out to Council and thank Council um, for their efforts in helping staff to be prepared and alleviate fees related to our legal team's expense. So I'm going to um, handle this item or attempt to handle this item, um, and I appreciate you guys sending uh, questions in advance. As you know, on May 22nd, the City Council passed a motion three to two to approve the purchase agreement as presented with three T's LLC with multiple modifications made within the motion. This included a modification to the release of covenants that requires unanimous City Council approval, as well as a modification requiring a one-year termination of the lease with Boldridge LLC to take place after closing on the property. These modifications to the motion led to necessary amendments to the purchase agreement that was presented that evening, which are provided to you in your council memo. And as I mentioned earlier, I'll go through each one, one at a time. We can ask questions and then move to the next one. Um, and as a motion at the end, you guys uh, can choose to approve them all at once or, or one at a time or do like a consent agenda where you can pick different items throughout. I'll, you guys can kind of direct that. Um, the purchase agreement was approved on the 22nd as is with these modifications. So anything beyond these amendments is technically already approved and would be out of scope of this agenda item. So with that, I'm gonna start with item number one and we'll just work our way down and, and you guys feel free to ask questions. Some of them will be um, quicker and easier and then I am taking minutes as I'm up here. So if you see me writing, that's all that's about two things at once. So the first amendment was um, the buyer's entity being updated in the purchase agreement to 3T's LLC. It was left blank initially. So that's a pretty minor one, but um, any questions on that one? I object. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that one, assuming I can move on to the second one? Okay. Second one. Um, in your packets, section 1B has been clarified to provide an inventory of personal property that will need to be provided by November 15th. 
Um, and you might recall that our list of personal property was pretty small anyways, but um, John and Tony will work to provide that by November 15th. Any questions on that one? Yeah, I, I do have a question on that one, and I'm trying to find the language. So there's some language. Would it be in, under the amended um, or red line, I suppose? Yeah, here it is. Sorry. It's under the purchase agreement uh, that has all the red lines with it. So at the bottom of that, it talks about the seller. It's, it states here, the seller will work with the tenant under the lease to prepare an inventory of personal property by November 15th. Um, I guess I, I have a challenge with that, that we're going to let the seller and the tenant work together to determine what's personal property. We're the seller. Sorry, am I reading that Not wrong? buyer. Sorry. Right. I know. Yeah. No, we will, we will yeah. work with. Okay. Yes. We will work. With, yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I'm, yep. I, I think I sent, might've sent that one to you earlier too. So you can cross it off your list. Okay. So, uh, seller being us, we'll work yep. with the buyer, excuse me, we'll work with the tenant to identify personal property and bring that forward by November 15th. Correct. We're yep. Good. And just for clarity purposes, cause I think this was one of the questions seller means would be city, but ultimately city council. Staff cannot, staff don't necessarily mean seller, it would be city council. Okay. Um, so if there's anything on that personal property that's substantial enough and material, it will come back to city council for any um, approvals. Okay, yeah. We, we had that initial list, it was pretty minor stuff, like a nacho machine and, and um, popcorn hot, you know, okay. but we also have not gone through there yet, yeah. and so, just wanted to clarify that. So you guys know that if there is anything on there that would be substantial, it would come back to seller being city council. Yeah, I know in the past we've, there's some confusion about mowers or whatnot, so. Totally, we okay. wanna just be able to go through there. Perfect. And, yeah. and Anna, that was, that's consistent throughout the purchase agreement, because I know that was a question I had, was obviously mundane things, I, mm -hmm. I don't care about nacho machines, but any material change <laughs> yeah. uh, would come back to back the council. To you. Okay. Yep, seller <laughs> being city and, and yeah. meaning city council, the, the staff, doesn't have the authority to contract anything of this nature. So that would be throughout the whole document. Okay, so good on two. I'm gonna go to yep. three. So number three, to accomplish the intent of the council of not terminating Boulder Ridge LLC until after closing, section 1C has been modified to allow the city to provide notice to the tenant at closing. Um, we can't uh, we can't notify after closing because we technically won't have the authority anymore because it would have been uh, that lease would have been transferred to the buyer but we'll do it at closing with the termination fee escrowed for payment to the tenant at the end of the lease which gives us the ability to ensure that the lease is maintained during 2024 um, and then the attached assignment and assumption agreement in your packets is a necessary document to accomplish all this. So we'll have an escrow account with the full amount of the lease termination amount. It'll happen at closing, and then that would be paid out at the end of the lease in 2025. Any questions on that one? It's kind of confusing timing. <laughs> so on that escrow, that was always intended to come out of proceeds, or was that the original? I can't. I trying to think back to a couple months ago. Can you talk about the source of that funding? Yeah, so that would come out of proceeds and initially that amount was 60,000 because it was initially proposed that it would be terminated in 2023 and now it'll be essentially two years later, timing wise, not a full two years, but um, initially we accounted for the 60,000 out of that. Now it'll be the 40,000 out so of the proceeds. So um, is there any language on the escrow as it relates to if the cancellation fee, it can only be used for a cancellation fee, so therefore if they work out a different deal and extend and there's not a cancellation, that would come back to the city then? So we are required no matter what, even if they work out a deal, that we have to pay that cancellation fee, so long as they meet the terms of the lease throughout 2024. So, so long as Boulder Ridge meets it, it doesn't matter if they um, renew a new lease, write it, you know, assign a new lease, anything, our lease will end in 2025 with them and we have to pay the cancellation. 
And then those proceeds go to the current leases of the Correct. Property. It would go directly to Boulder Ridge from that escrow account. Okay. So it will never it will never change hands to the buyer. It would go directly to Boulder Ridge. Does that make sense? Any other question? Okay. Number four. Earnest money has been reduced from 60000 to 42600 10% of the purchase rice price, which is the, a standard earnest amount. The $60,000 figure that we previously had on the original purchase agreement was based on the assumption that the lease would be, a terminate, would be terminated immediately, um, and we'd offer that one-year lease termination, and that higher number of earnest money was used to essentially match that termination fee that I mentioned for terminating in 2023. So now that that um, termination is a full year out, went back to the standard 10% of the sale price. Any questions on that one? What's necessitating that? I mean, it's a, seems like a little bit of a minute difference there. Yeah, it, I mean, it was honestly originally 10%, and then when we adjusted the termination fee, my understanding is that that was just a request from the buyer to go back to the 10%, just to have the standard. Any other questions on that one? That makes sense. I mean, is this like a walkaway deal? Obviously, there's not a lot of time and money and effort that's gone into this, and so I kind of like keeping it where it was, to be honest with you, from the perspective of, you know, that really keeps them motivated to move forward with the sale and not walk away at the last minute. Mm -hmm. uh, that's usually what earnest money is there for, and I know 10% is kind of an industry average, uh, but they're all over the board, typically. Mm -hmm. I should mention it's non-refundable. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a key. No matter what the amount is, it's a non-refundable. Um, so if the sale does not go through and this purchase agreement, uh, agreement is signed by both parties, we would receive those funds. And it hasn't been paid yet? No, not until this is signed. And we don't have to, you don't have to make a motion on it now. We can, you guys can decide that later. I just wanted to make sure you knew it was non-refundable. Um, number five, section three is clarifications for closing related to the title company and then removal of any junk or debris on the property. Um, I know some of the sheds especially were, will, is something that we'll need to walk through and just make sure what, what's ours and what's the property or what's the ownership of the tenants that are currently there. Um, number seven. Actually, can I ask a oh, question on that? Yep, sorry. sorry. So when you talk about buildings, are, I mean, it's as is, right? So with all the buildings, I mean, is, are we talking like they were like, hey, move that building because I don't want it here anymore? Or the, where are we, what are you considering junk? I've actually, John, you'll have to answer that of what's in those buildings of. Well, half of the one building is ours. So it's all our stuff in one okay. of them. So we got to get that out. The other half is their storage. So okay. we, when we purchased the golf course, we split that big green building in half, we built a wall in the middle, so we had half and they had half. So we, we have quite a bit of city materials in there. So we're talking about more stuff inside the buildings, but not like- Oh yeah, take, not the actual down, building take itself. Take down this shed. No, no, so okay. under junk, we're only saying personal property. Right, okay. Right? Yeah. Or, yep. And of course, some of it, if it's tenant property, they'll leave it there for yeah. the next year because yeah. they still have a year of their lease. So it's essentially our personal property. Um, okay, number, number six, um, section 4B has been modified to reflect information related to property taxes, uh, which is just stating that upon the sale, it's no longer tax exempt. It's no longer public property. It would go on the tax rolls. Uh, number seven. Uh, real quick oh, on that one. Sorry. It, it goes on to say that it'll be split into two parcels. It'll be uh, class, the not parcels, but two different um, class tax classifications. So they'll tax, if you look on like blackberries, for example, they tax the greens as a, as a green fee, like almost huh. like a park tax category. And then the tax rate for commercial is taxed for the portion of the property that's commercial. So it'll stay one parcel. But then they determine which portion the, of the parcel. Yeah, parcels. the clubhouse and one acre property will be classified as commercial and the balance will be classified as golf course. Correct. So they're yep. able to do that as They're able to do that as a part parcel. of one parcel, yep. 
And that was accounted for in the financial projections for us too. We knew that from the tax assessor when we initially talked to him. Um, number seven. At the direction of the council, the sentence, seller shall not release such covenants without a unanimous vote by the seller's council has been added to section 7A. Any questions on that one? I know I had sent over an email question on that one. Just if we talked with the attorney after that vote that we had, is that something we can legally obligate future councils to do? Yeah. Um, great question, and that one I really appreciate it in advance because it gave me the opportunity to verify with Adam. So um, the council can certainly require this language, and you guys can see that it's in the purchase agreement and then also in the development agreement. That's the one amendment to the development agreement. So you can enter that language. Um, that's not an issue in that piece of its legal, just understand that it's aspirational. The current council cannot obligate a future council to unanimous vote when it is not required to by law. Some votes are required by law to be unanimous. And it could be something that could be challenged by a future, future council, but it would require legal action by them and a consensus of that future council. Anything requiring council action in the future can not be altered administratively. So it's not something any staff could change. No one has the authority to substitute for the council. So essentially, you would be making it very difficult for that future council to make that change. Um, but my understanding is that was our intent, is that we wanted to make it difficult. So um, just know that you are strapping a future council. Um, but, and it would likely take some legal action on their part, but it is something that you can put in the agreement. So that's a decision by you guys to, to make. Um, as, it, as what you have in front of you tonight, it does have it included in there and in the development agreement. Any other questions on that one? Help me understand what the legal, uh, so I heard you say that we can't do it, but we have it in there. You can put it in there as, as language, um, but that future council would need to work with their attorney at that time to be able to legally remove that from the document or and have a consensus that, hey, we don't want to require unanimous vote. Right. Um, a majority, at any point in time, a simple majority could vote to amend a development agreement just as we could today. Right. You would. They would likely need to... Because this is a legally recorded document, it would likely involve a little bit more than just a council meeting where they make a vote. But my understanding is that it would require some title work and, and legal action on that and then a majority consensus to make that change and it would have to be done at a council level. So it would be adding some layers to a future council should they ever want to go down that road. Um, yeah, I guess council, I think, all, all that I'm hearing it does is gives our sentiment to a future council within the development agreement. That we don't want it to not be a golf course. Unless all five council members, something we can't envision today comes up that five council members say, hey, it's no longer usable as a golf course, right? Mm -hmm. um, but outside of that, it seems like it's, it's just a simple majority, which yes. I think we've all learned. Um, post that meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it essentially, like you said, it gets your sentiment across, makes it a little harder for, you know, more hoops for them to have to jump through if they were to ever pursue it down that road, but it would be possible for them to approve it from a, a simple majority. Okay, and then... Number eight, the deadline to construct improvements in Section 7B has been increased by a month to, from October 1st to October 31st, um, and this is to allow more of the golf season to occur without disruption due to the change in the lease termination language. Any question on that one? And then, as I mentioned, the one amendment to the development agreement was related to the um, release of covenants may not be granted before 30 years after the effective date without the unanimous approval of the Sartell City Council. So that's just reiterating point number seven. That was the amendment in the purchase agreement. I do want to make sure everybody understands, though, that this is still just a draft development agreement. That will come back. And so 
that development agreement and, and really any development agreement we do for any developments for the city is really the, that's the meat. That's gonna have the site plans and timelines and more of the specifics in it. So that will have to come back to the city council sometime this winter before closing. Um, so that's just a draft, but um, it made sense to put it in there because it's the same thing that we're putting in the purchase agreement at this time. Last is the assignment agreement, which is in reference to the change in the um, lease states. And as I mentioned earlier, it's to accomplish the intent of the council of not terminating Boulder Ridge until um, after closing. So it's a, an agreement that we're gonna assign that the current lease, and it's gonna be assumed by the buyer, there's gonna be that escrow account for 40,000. 2024 will be property owned by three T's. It will be a lease our lease assumed by three T's, and then um, Boulder Ridge would be terminated one year from closing, which will be in 2025. And then the escrow account will come into play so long as uh, they maintain the course and meet the, the lease during the term of 2024. Any questions on that item? Okay. So that is one through eight of the amendments on the purchase agreement, the one amendment on the development agreement, and the assignment agreement. So we would then look for a motion on these amendments as a whole, if you guys wanna break it out like con consent agenda, um, and they can be taken individually, and then I can record accordingly in minutes. Uh, first, I'd say, do we have our those documents you wanted to give us? Sorry, My yes, bad. that's Exhibit E. Um, thank you, Ryan, sorry if I failed to point that out. Um, exhibit E is the original proposal. <laughs> um, teamwork, thank you, Carrie. So Exhibit E is the original proposal that was submitted as a part of the RFP process, um, and that's referenced throughout the purchase agreement, but it wasn't actually attached in your council packets, and so um, Ryan had just asked that we make sure that you guys actually get a copy of that. Now keep in mind that on the final development agreement, we're gonna have, it will be more refined specific. Like that's the proposal exhibit E, but the development agreement will have specific plans. And that, again, will come back to council. So before us tonight, we have a revised purchase agreement. We have the assignment agreement. Um, was there a third item? Uh, the one amendment to the development agreement. One amendment to the development, but that is still a work in progress. Yeah, that'll come right? back. Yeah. It's um, essentially an exhibit to the purchase agreement right now, so that's why it's included as an amendment, um, but it will come back for a final draft. Um, I guess question, one question is on the purchase agreement amendments is, are those clerical driven from us or are they driven from the buyer? On the items one through eight? Yeah. So most of them are driven from the change in the motion of the original purchase agreement that you guys would have seen on May 22nd. Um, a couple other items that related to the purchase agreement that I feel like we're reviewing the purchase agreement tonight. Um, we talk about a maintenance agreement in there, but we only talk about it as a reference point. And so it's the maintenance agreement that you pulled from the um, uh, PGA or USGA. Oh. And it, but it's highlighted in, and I'm, I can look in the purchase agreement where it's listed, but it, it's highlighted only as, um, as an ex follows an example policy provided by the United States Golf Association. That's listed as an exhibit. Later. Yeah, I guess yep. my point is, as I read it today, I don't know that we actually have a maintenance policy which was a lot of our discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the intent of the, of the buyer is to maintain it as a golf course, maintain it to the certain standards. 
but in the language, we're only talking about it as an example and not as a an agreement or a policy. Does so my understanding sense? is that what's in the exhibit, which is the chart of all of the standards, would yep. be what would need to be followed. Yeah, and so item, um, item 7 on the purchase agreement and 7A, uh, yep. which is the covenants. Item A, it talks about uh, maintenance policy halfway through that paragraph attached is exhibit F. The maintenance policy follows an example policy provided by the United States Golf Association. And all we're really doing is copying and, and pasting pasted mm -hmm. the Golf Association. I guess my ask, and I don't know that we need to amend this purchase agreement with it, but that we bolster exhibit F um, to not just be an example, but to somehow work with the buyer to actually craft a maintenance policy so that we can be on the same page now versus later. Hopefully we never have to discuss it, but mm -hmm. at a future point in time, if it has to be discussed, there had been an agreement and not just an example. Mm -hmm. And then under seven, item um, B1, it states any changes to improvements that reduce the size, scope of, of improvements requires approval by seller. I think you answered that earlier, but this is what we were look, looking at in improvements, right? Well, yes and or development agreement. So this, it's okay. also... You know, obviously, they'll, you'll see much more refined plans, and that's really what you're going to want. You know, so let's say you get plans for a 4,000 square foot, and all of a sudden it's going to be a 500 square foot. You know, obviously, that yeah. any change like that. That's what I'm. Okay. Yes. That's what yep. I'm trying to cover, and I think again by seller, you city stating council. Sell, seller city council. I think you mm -hmm. cover that. That's my concern. Is we see some pretty awesome amenities that will be developed here, and if two years from now it's mm -hmm. the same clubhouse, what's our teeth or what's our recourse? Then, correct, then you, um, and, and the development agreement will actually, that will be a very, very okay. important document for us to review because that's gonna really be where the teeth is and there's a take back clause for us to take the property back if it's not completed by that date to the um, standard that was agreed to in the plans in there. You know, of course, if there's changes to it that you guys approve, that's one thing, but if you'll get that opportunity to say, nope, we're not okay with that. So we're approving, we're being asked tonight to approve a updated purchase agreement mm -hmm. subject to a future development agreement, which will have a lot of the meat in it. Yep. And I guess sequencing that, how do we see that if, if, if buyer and seller can't agree in the development agreement, which is gonna have a lot of the, I think, exciting parts of it, mm -hmm. does the purchase agreement then cancel? It would terminate. It and does? And in that situation, because, because if it's something where we can't come to agreement on terms and buyer's not willing to meet something that we feel is a requirement in the development agreement that we've been clear on, then, You've got the non-refundable earnest. You cancel it. You could have come to agreement that, hey, we're just going to end this. We're going to move on. We're not going to be able to come to agreement. But the purchase agreement really says, yep, we're going to work towards closing, and we've got this yeah. earnest money. But, yeah, the development agreement will be a, a the next step that Adam will be kicking off with the Okay, buyer. we don't know a timeline? Well, he told me today sometime this winter, for sure before closing, obviously. <laughs> um, but there's, I mean, now, once this purchase agreement is signed, now the buyer needs to go get design plans, site plans, start meeting with development team, things of that nature. Yeah. So it will take a little bit of time here to kind of um, hone out what, what does that development look like and that site plan and timelines of all that. But it will have to be done before closing, absolutely, so. I think just into your earlier point, Ryan, on F that you were referencing as it relates to the example of the policy, like Exhibit F, 
I didn't read it the same way you did. I felt like that was that is part of the agreement is Exhibit F. Not it's not just an example, but so I mean if we need to change it, but I know that was approved prior mm -hmm. um, um, to this. So um, I just wanted to make that clear is that I felt like we were all on the same page of that that was part of it and actually part of the development. And if the language has to change, that has to change. But I know that was approved prior. prior. Um, and I know that I wasn't, there's other things in the purchase agreement I had other issues with um, that I won't rehash tonight, but I, I, I just want to make sure too, staff feels good about all the other requirements that say seller will provide, seller will meet these obligations. You guys feel like from the transfer of title and all the other things, you guys feel prepared and we're not missing anything and we're feeling good that we have what we need to make that transaction happen. Yeah, I, I think we feel comfortable and good about that. And to your point about the, um, the exhibit F, I kind of understood it the same way, Jed, and I, I I, also think, I wonder if there's an opportunity to just provide another further clarification or item just to state something in the development agreement. So I'll pass that on to Adam because that development agreement gets recorded with the property. And so it's, um, I, I just wonder if there's a way that we can provide even more clarity just to make sure we're all on the same page of what those standards are. But yes, just to ask, you know, our next steps once this gets signed will be to go out there and do inventory. Tony's gone out there and done um, just an inspection of the property and greens and make sure he has a good understanding of all of that. But um, our next step will be uh, inventory and we're gonna, we'll probably, we have until November 15th, but we've just kind of been waiting for it to be a little bit slower there with weather and not be in their way. <laughs> so. On that point, would Tony then document that in a way with pictures and kind of uh, like some sort of documentation so that in seven years when they say, what did it look like when they took it over, that there's actually some documentation with that? Yeah, he um, made my day and made a really beautiful binder um, that has about 30 different pictures in it. And it's got, I mean, every single page, every single green has an inspection sheet with it with a picture and there's pictures of the wells and he did a really nice job of um, being able to identify this is what it looks like today. I was, I was very impressed. It's we have an asset management program that we use in the utility department. He used it with a lab, with a iPad and went out and photographed awesome. everything. And it's yeah, it's all pretty set cool. Up in an asset management program. Anna, can you clarify on the development agreement? Um, does council have power just to um, essentially nix the deal just based off the items that we listed specifically in the purchase agreement? Or if there's a shed in the back of the property, they like, we don't, vice versa that we can have that discussion, or the, just specifically the parking lot, irrigation, clubhouse, that got spelled out in that agreement. Yeah, I think you it would be pretty refined to what we have in the development agreement thus far, except for the areas that the buyer will need to fill in. So the site plan and the, the specific development plans. And um, yeah, we won't be able to get too crazy and out of scope on our um, asks, but, um, if, as long as it's specific to the document. And ultimately, as the way I read the purchase agreement, I felt like it was based off of the what we have already. Yeah. It would be a size and scope change mm -hmm. down uh, where we would have that, I would believe, uh, more so than where if they come back with this, Minor, it, yeah. it's already there. Right? Yeah. It's, uh, there's not a lot of, to go off of. I would agree, Jed. Yep. I, I agree with um, going back to Jed's comment earlier that the intent of that item F was, um, that that was the maintenance guide um, and, and approved as such previously. And I'm comfortable with the changes outlined. I think um, they're based on our motion um, and what was approved and it, it makes logical sense to me the the items that are being proposed to change. So I'm comfortable moving forward. Anna, did we get answers to questions that were submitted, or how do we flow through yeah. those? Yeah, yep, I do um, have them here. Do you want me to just go through them, or do you want to? I'm trying no, to. I guess the. I yeah, if there's one specific. Uh, um, I guess two rounds. I submitted some Friday, and then uh, some this <laughs> morning. Um, and again, I'm not. The intent of council uh, majority was to move forward on this. Um, I'm looking at this as an opportunity. Do we have any loose ends there that we have an opportunity to tie up, right? One, one really that sticks out to me is the indemnification, and that's page nine, section 10, mm -hmm. where we are agreeing to mutually uh, indemnify one another. And I look at that as uncertain as to why 
the city of Sartell would indemnify a purchaser of property, um, an L essentially an LLC, which frankly can close tomorrow and walk away somewhat financially risk-free, whereas the city of Sartell as a standing entity can't. And I, I, it feel, feels to me like that balance of risk is far outweighed, and I'm wondering if that was one of my questions, why would we offer this, or is there a way to yeah, so I, negate it? Um, I asked for clarity from that one from Adam, and he said that that's a standard clause in, in any of our agreements, and it usually is both ways mutual, um, and it essentially ensures that both parties are meeting the you know status quo of what we've all agreed to, nothing above, nothing less, and that both of us indemnify each other. Um, essentially, if we expect indemnification, it's pretty standard that we would also need to offer it, is what his explanation was. So we could, I, I gathered that we could require that as a standalone indemnification if we weren't comfortable with it being both ways, but he, he was pretty uncomfortable with that. He felt like it should be mutual. Um, and if there's an, and I would agree, if there's indemnification, it probably should be mutual. mutual yeah. The resounding question I have is why? Yeah. Like, and I don't know the reason why. I don't understand. I, I've honestly never seen a contract where that's not in there. I, and it just, so I, I kind of, I think it is just truly a, hey, there's ever a lawsuit or anything. Like, we're going to, we agree to work in good faith. We're going to indemnify each other. I don't know that it's a, a necessarily a risk thing of us weighing towards the LLC. Um, I mean, if it, if we get to a place to where we're having to terminate this, it's, we're likely going to terminate it before it would get to indemnification anyways, or, sure. or having a lawsuit anyways. Yeah, and I guess I'm looking at post the closure post, of, of yeah. the sale, if there's something to happen. I mean, at, at that I point, even, it's a standalone yeah. entity, and, and we're stating that we would indemnify them. I, it, yeah. Again, um, it was part of the original, It's, mm -hmm. um, but it's something that I look at as, as we have this open and as we're talking about it. I'm not sure if we fully uh, understand the the risk there, and and hopefully we maybe never need to. I was going to say I, I think the the thought is that it would not be something we need to use. Uh, Council, any other questions on the purchase agreement? Ryan, do you want me to? Sorry, do you? I'm just reading through some of these other ones here. That yeah, I'm I think, doing the same. I I yeah. think we're. I think we covered them. Um, page eight, section seven, item F. We could add just to, like you said, to tie up loose ends. Add thirty years in there just to really make sure we have that documented. That that release of covenants is a thirty-year document. I know there's an exhibit that's attached, but I think the more areas that we write that, the better. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's more of a clerical item, but I um, we certainly could could make that addition if council was. Um, agreeable to that. Yeah. Um, again, to me, that seems clerical. If, if mm -hmm. we want to, great. If we don't, I'm, I think we've already talked through the intent there and it's covered elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the next one down will be the last one is page nine, section nine, item B. Yep. Um, we have it today as that the buyer will prove the financial ability within 10 days of closing. And my ask is, can we change that to be within 10 days of the fully executed purchase agreement? Um, I don't know if there's repercussions of interest rate or others. My only sense on that is if we're all going through and we're going to be spending money to get to the end result of selling this property in January, I'd rather know now that that it might fall apart financially versus knowing 10 days prior to closing. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't know if that's standard, if that's not, I'm not sure. Well, I think that the, I, I think I get, or I think Adam understood what you were trying to get at. Um, cause we, so we do already have the financial ability letter of credit from, um, the initial RFP that we requested for the 426,000. Yep. Um, I, 
I don't want to make an assumption, and Adam didn't want to either, but he's, he assumed you were speaking to the fact of, is there financial ability to do the actual improvements? The developments. Right. Correct. And so those numbers aren't known yet because we don't Correct. have an official site plan. So perhaps maybe a, it would make more sense to say within 10 days from a fully executed development agreement. So that we actually, because you're going to want to. But the development agreement likely doesn't happen until this winter, which gets us to right maybe 30 days. I, so, yeah. But it would be, and this, Jed, you would maybe be able to speak to this. From Adam's understanding, it would be tough for there to be a financial backing to a plan that there isn't a dollar amount to yet. Yeah, I would just say it's pretty standard, uh, 10 days from closing, just okay. because if there's a financing that's going with it, they don't even start the process until the purchase agreement's done. And so going through the paperwork in the process usually is a letter of credit from the bank basically saying final approval, earnest money is non-refundable. I do agree with you on the development side. It's a little bit more risky, and so that's one. But again, the, the actual, uh, I would want that to be in the development agreement that says it has to be prior to closing the financial ability to create all of that, um, or it would cancel the transaction and the earnest money wouldn't be returned. Um, but ultimately, um, I think it's pretty normal to get pretty close to the closing date based on the process it takes and to I go through that And I expect this step. to be an absolute moot point um, based off yeah. of the buyer, based off the involvement of the buyer, the work that's being put in. But like you said, let's tie up loose yeah. ends and just spell it out. So I, I, I think you get we're on the same page with Adam, and he understood what you were getting at there. Yeah. So I think we can adjust that. That's all I have, Council. Uh, anyone have anything else or other questions? Okay. Yeah. Uh, seeing none, would look for a motion to approve the amendments. I'd like to have discussion on item four, or amendment four. Oh, yep. Uh, purchase, the item four in the purchase earnest. agreement revisions? The, the, the earnest money change from 60,000 to 42,600. Okay. Floor is yours. Yeah, I, I just think I, I, I think that's something that uh, we had negotiated up front. Um, it's not that out of bounds from a normal um, type of earnest money on a transaction like this. Um, I, I do know that now it's larger than the actual um, lease termination fee, but I also think, to your point, what we were just discussing, which is you have a development agreement, some other things from a financial perspective that we want to make sure continue to, to follow through, and the earnest money really is the driver uh, for the pace of those things, and, and really the ultimately any condition we put into the development agreement also um, gives us a little bit more... Um, sense of urgency surrounding some of the uh, questions we may ask for in a development agreement. So I would be in favor of um, not reducing that. Um, the other items tonight I felt uh, were fine. Council, uh, any discussion on that? Thoughts or? Um, I think the fact, if it, I think if the buyer came forward just strictly reducing it, um, I understand what Jed's saying, but I think with the um, how we have it tied to the termination of the lease, um, and with that um, extra year in there, with that being reduced, um, I'm okay with being the the ten percent, the forty two six. I'd agree. I think um, the original intent was to give us some assurance or some uh, the dollars to get out of the lease with Boulder Ridge, which prior to um, the new lease termination would have been sixty thousand dollars to the city. Given that's reduced to forty thousand, I'm fine with the change. I would just weigh in on both of those. From you know, ten percent earnest money would be on the purchase price, and the 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 actual termination fee would be separate from that, right? Right now, if we do only the forty thousand or forty two six, um, that just covers the actual. I mean, it was at twenty six hundred dollar earnest money in, in essence because the other 40 is put into escrow based on the termination fee and so we're not actually even getting um, the total amount or 10 percent on earnest money and typically earnest money is to keep people engaged through the process based on all of the things that we've laid out including um, sense of urgency on development agreements some of the other things that we're doing and so a twenty six hundred dollar uh, earnest money i guess from the difference of what the termination fee would be it doesn't seem like enough to me.
I guess I'm looking. Uh, I'm looking at a difference of seventeen thousand four hundred. Um, I feel like there's enough money being spent on this agreement between the buyer seller today that I don't know if that's in my opinion I don't know if seventeen four is enough to force someone's additional engagement or not. Um, not to mention the the public you know um, discussion out there that they want you know from a buyer they want to see this close and, and move on which is understandable and so I agree with your points Jed but I just don't know that um, I don't know that it does much I don't know that the 17400 does um, much in this situation. Mayor, maybe what we do is take, let's par out item four and get the other motions done, and then that way that one can be motioned separately. Um, that might make it a little bit easier to kind of separate that one out. And I wrote down items one through eight on the purchase agreement, except for you'd have the one item on the development agreement the assignment agreement, and then adding 30 days to page eight, section seven, item F, and adding 10 days from development agreement on page nine, section nine, item B, would be the motion, all, essentially all of that except for item four. Sorry, adding 10 days, what was that about? 10 days from development agreement, so, or, or should be closing. Yeah, I think we cancel that, I, I guess I learned from Jed, who will take from an industry side that that's standard, so. Okay, so we can just remove that one, okay. So it'd be items one through eight except four, development agreement item, amendment, assignment agreement, and then page eight, section seven, item F to include 30 days. I would make a motion to approve as stated. I'm not going to repeat, repeat it. <laughs> Council, there's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, any further discussion? So to uh, reiterate, we're keeping item four out of this motion mm -hmm. as a secondary motion. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. I would look for a motion on item four. I'll make a motion to approve item four of the purchase agreement amendment. We have a motion as to presented, right? At the 42 right. As presented. We have a motion to approve item four as presented. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries 4 1. On to item 9B, which is now the discussion of golf course zoning. Go golf course zoning, thank you. Yeah, and this was um, a question by. A couple of you around the um, purchase agreement. So I appreciate it being added as a separate um, agenda item and not a part of the purchase agreement amendment because that made that a lot easier. Um, so I think, Jed, do you want to maybe kind of kick us off and I can answer any questions on that one? Yeah, I just think we had a lot of discussion around that during the golf course sale purchase agreement conversation. Uh, we've never really followed back up on that. Um, obviously, asking some of the questions around the legality of the unanimous decision and some futuristic uh, council having the ability to, one, maybe legally get a change, but then to a majority and the majority voting to uh, waive those covenants. I think um, having a park zoning um, on this property as a discussion that we've had before would give further protections to the intention of this remaining a golf course. And I wanted to bring that back up for discussion for us to discuss. Yeah, and I, um, 
to add to that, uh, we have a new part, or will have a new park commission. Um, and actually, Tony is doing tours with them, I think next week already with some of them. Um, I, I wonder, I go back and forth on what's a better option, park zoning and creating an actual zoning district or, or park platting, which is an actual recorded document with the plat would probably be a little bit more extensive process although we would have to add a zoning district for park either way. But I, either one would put some teeth to it, and I also know that there's at least a half dozen other parks in Sartell that don't have either, um, that need cleanup on it as well. Pine Glen Central Park is not a platted park, um, or, and we don't currently today have a park zoning. And so I, I wonder if that's a good first item to have them look at this fall, especially if they're gonna go around and do tours. I'd like to do a cleanup of the whole system, but also especially that property of saying, hey, how do you want us to address this? Um, you know, whether we do park zoning or park cladding, just something that crossed my mind. I go back and forth on which one would be better. Both would take time. Do we know, um, today we own the property, in the future, we won't own the property. Do we lose the ability to do one or both of those in the future when we are not the owner? I would have to get clarity from Adam on the rezone. I think you could rezone at any point. Correct. Um, like the, you would for any other property. The property owner would have to consent to it. Consent to that. Um, platting. Platting would be I'm different. Just story. in general. Um, would be more expensive and extensive because we would actually have to have a surveyor go out and plat every park. Um, so it's a recorded park document in the plat. So that'd be more extensive and expensive from our end. Um, if we rezone a property to park, that would be the less extent, expensive option um, and still same outcome and intent, I believe. So would that be the same? But, um, so if there's other parks, would we, even though there's expense, so, but if we take this property out of it and we look at it, you know, um, is, there's obviously more teeth. Would that be the same approach that we'd be probably taking on these other parks or would we go through the platting process on the other parks as well? I, I, would, I would assume that any new plat that we'd take in, we would make require it be a platted park. Some are platted um, as parkland from the development, um, so that would be something I would recommend going forward, um, and then just making sure that all of our parks are in a park district, but that's ultimately, from what you're discussing, something the park commission would yeah, I decide or recommend. In my, I personally, professionally, prefer the platted route. Whenever a park is platted, if there's ever a future council that wants to do anything with that property, it goes back to the original owner. So you can never, we have some property over on Third Street that is a platted park property, and we don't use it as a park, but we can't sell it because it's a park, and it's platted as a park, and if we were to ever try to do anything different with it, it has to go back to the original owner who platted it as a park. Yeah, it would have, because it's in, it, in lieu of the fees we're yeah. getting that way, right. so either we'd have to pay back those fees, mm -hmm. or, they would just get the property back. So that's so I like the I but I also I think the park zoning district is a quicker route to get to what to the same ends. I just like the teeth on the park platting a little bit better. But again, I, I think it'd be a good a very good learning experience for that park commission to understand the differences between the two because um, there are some and it and there's not just cost, it's it's the long term of ever making changes to that property. I'd have to talk through with Adam too on zoning districts can be changed, right? So it's, you know, you put it as a park zoning district today, what happens 20 years from now if a council wants to rezone that? I'd have to talk that through too. I'd wanna, I'd wanna lay that all out to make sure like what's the best option here to get at what we're trying to get at. And I, I agree. I think we need to holistically go through all of that. I think everyone learned a lot through this process of 
what's a park, what's not a park, what do we call a park. Um, what I don't want to miss is, uh, and, and it's like, we need to be up front with the buyer. Like, we're in this honeymoon phase where the buyer's doing a lot of work. We all talked about that should be a park and we should keep it as a park. What I don't want to do is get to December or January and have us rezone it to a park. And now that throws either a clerical wrinkle or a massive wrinkle in it. That or and or get to February and we no longer have the ability because the buyer or the owner of that time isn't going to change it to a park. And so it's like one more of those loose ends of how do we tie that up? I agree. There's a holistic park inventory we should go through and look at, and I think that's perfect for the park commission. I would be more inclined on the zoning side now just to zone that a park. Uh, I think that answers a lot of things, uh, questions that still sit out in the community as well and really puts us forward. Hey, we said we were going to sell this. We sold it. We said it was going to stay... 30 years, we're zoning it as a park to keep it parkland. That's the buyer's intent. That's our intent. I, and again, maybe that needs to be a conversation with the buyer, I, unless that intent's changed, which I don't expect it would have, but. I, I can, know. yeah, I just um, made a note here that I could connect with, I could connect with Adam and the buyer, and I think he can articulate that conversation of um, adding that park zoning. We don't currently have that zoning, so we would need to update our zoning districts. There'd be a few. What's the process on the platting process? Carrie? So it would just, this specific property um, would just, it's already been platted, so it just have to get replatted, so that'd be a, a it would be quicker, um, and ultimately it goes to Planning Commission for review. Um, and recommendation um, for the preliminary and final plat, and then city council would have final say. So it would follow the same process that we currently do. Okay, so not an extended long period of time? No, um, council would have to make the decision within 60 days of the application, so we make sure that is followed. I, th I guess I would be in favor of the platting route. Um, I think, because it comes back to the original owner uh, this just gives us more protection in kind of what the intent of the vote was. Uh, so in 30 years when this is over, I mean, the council has the ability as being the original owners uh, to release that um, plat uh, at that time. Um, so I, I would be more in favor of the platting agreement, which then gives everything that we discussed here as it relates to what the intent of this property is. It gives it a little bit more uh, teeth to actually follow through for the next 30 years and remain a golf course, which was everybody's goal up here. Mm -hmm. I'd be open to the discussion on, um, obviously we've discussed some unknowns here, um, but as it pertains to this agreement, um, I'd be open to the plotting and discussing with the to-be new owner um, after they are the owners of that property. Um, I think in good faith to come in now and replot it as a park um, isn't the right um, way to approach it, but I do um, appreciate having that opportunity to talk with them in ways that we still can make it a park. But I think at this point, um, doing that pre-sale, kind of like Ryan hit on, um, would be a detriment to to this agreement. I I can. Why don't I bring both concepts? Because I don't know at the time that we. I think at the time we were talking about just park zoning, but there is this park platting. I I can bring. Both concepts and um, you know discuss timing and things of that nature. I'm also as we're talking about platting, it would maybe make sense if there would be willingness from the buyer of um, resurveying. Don't cringe, but resurveying and platting to have the commercial portion of it on a different plat or a different parcel than the um, green space, just because you're not going to want to plat the commercial portion as as a park. Mm -hmm that you would want to play at the back portion. So we'd have to, I, there's things that we'd have to talk through with them. To your point, we've you know, already approved a purchase agreement and he, his offer was based on our requirement of a park for 30 years. I, wonder, I also wonder if maybe even as a part of a release of covenants or development agreement, there could be something in there that that gets released. 
I, quick question on if we could see the the is there an advantage for the buyer tax wise or finance wise to have that a park? Um, I mean, there's a positive and negative. Yeah, I, I, if I have a purchase agreement and then someone comes in, and chops down all the trees or changes the driveway or something, that's not something I would, you know, go forward with. If, I don't want to compromise the sale. But I, I do think the dialogue between the buyer and us and potential savings or, you know, benefits for that. Yeah. If that's we could a good express question. that to them, you know, if it is park zone, you know, and that's the intent. Uh, is what we understand is it's going to maintain a golf course and, and going forward, and we've clearly overstated it. Um, but I think what's the f benefit of to them mm -hmm. if there is one, um, or is it just purely by name? Yeah, that'd be interesting if you split those plats out and did a commercial plat and the park one, what would be that tax benefit of that? I imagine there would be one. I would assume. But, so, but I... Rob and I would have to connect with the assessor, but I imagine you're no longer, I don't know how they do that with the green fees. We'd it's got to be similar <laughs> to where it would be today because they're today right. they're taking one acre plus the clubhouse and saying that's commercial and they're generically saying everything else is green. green. If yeah. you just split those out. You're essentially doing what they're the saying. Yeah. yeah, I just feel like this would get in writing and I don't think it would be the surprise to the, to the buyer. Uh, if we engage in these conversations, I mean, it's, it's yeah, to Tim's I can point, we overstated this over and over, and everybody seems to have the same intent mm -hmm. to actually put it in writing, and if it can be released at the development time, as or the intent, uh, aspiration of this council is to release it at the, the development time for future development in 30 years, if that's, uh, um, but ultimately, we did agree on 30 years as a golf course, and this would give it a little bit more subsidence, um, both for the community and really for me to, and us up here to, to know that this is actually going to follow through with that. Yeah. I, I think it, it, I think it's a good conversation to have. I just want to make sure that we're, what we're doing is we're setting up something that can be applied to, to parks across the city, and we're not just doing something specific for this property mm, yeah. um, because there are other park lands in the same mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, most situation. of them we, we plat. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I think that should be a follow-up park commission and we start working through mm -hmm. some of the stuff because I think to Ryan's earlier point, we all learned what's a park, what's not a park through this process and um, conversations had come up saying it should have been zoned mm -hmm. earlier, you know, whenever we purchased it. Let's go take care of our other parks through a process going to next year. This one obviously has a different time frame because the change of ownership then releases our ability to do that. Um, obviously, we want it to be in conjunction with them, but ultimately post-sale, they don't even really have, the buyer wouldn't have to talk to us anymore, right? I guess, if they <laughs> didn't want to. And I think right now we all have the same intent, and if we put it in writing to a greater degree, I think that would protect the spirit of what we're trying to accomplish here. Yeah, I can. I, I will definitely have that conversation and look into the, um, talk to the assessor for the tax side of it. And I agree, Jill, I think whatever we do, just do it consistently across the board to all of our parks. Yeah. Good. Okay. I've got direction there. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, next item on old business is north or west water treatment plan improvements. Yes, good evening, Mayor, members of the council. Um, before you tonight is the north water treatment plan improvement um, plans for approval and authorization to bid. There we go. The project location, this is the water treatment plant that's up close to the high school there, so you can see just north of 27th Street, um, directly adjacent to Oak Ridge Elementary School. A little bit of background on this particular project. 2021-2022, um, a water treatment, condition assess water treatment plant condition assessment was completed. Um, that assessment recommended some improvements to the chlorine room at this particular treatment plant. Later discussions with city staff um, really focused on the conversion of the chlorine feed from gas to a liquid, um, primarily for safety reasons. Right now there's a risk assessment um, plan that needs to come yearly for this plant. Um, and liquid feed would be much safer to store and would not require the city to maintain that risk management plan. Um, so the plant was originally built in 2001 and had this gas feed 
since then, um, you know, Oak Ridge Elementary School is there, the high school is there. Um, there's some neighborhoods that have come up, you know, Gates of Blackberry, um, Eagle Ridge, similar neighborhoods and really close to this. Um, so that safety concern really kind of drove this discussion of changing it from gas to liquid. Um, that brought forth the spring this year, we had a conversion study to look at more of the details of what that would look like. Um, and then in June, that study was brought to council um, and then there was authorization for the design of that conversion. So just a quick overview, um, not a super big project and would involve removing the old tank that's there, installing two new tanks, um, again, converting from that gas to liquid form. Um, and then this new system would be designed to accommodate the full water plant capacity. Estimated project costs, um, you can see on the screen here, soft costs, including the feasibility study design and construction services of 49,500. Um, construction estimate is coming at 187,200. Um, construction contingency, 18,800. And I'll make one note, um, there was a mistake in the memo there. Um, I think it's just above nine grand in your memo for that contingency. Um, the 18,800 is correct. It doesn't affect that total project cost. The 245,420 um, is the same thing you have in your memo on, as on the screen. Um, and then also accounted for is the um, buyback of the original tank. They did receive a quote. Um, for actually selling back the tank that's there um, right now, and so that's 10 grand, as you can see, factored in. Um, the city did budget between the study and the chlorine improvements, um, 255,000 for 2023 um, for the study and improvements, and you can see our total estimated project cost is 245, 420. Project schedule, um, pending approval tonight. There would be bidding in October with the ward. Um, November and then construction hopefully starting uh, early next year. With that, I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions? Right. What's the cost if we don't do that? Uh, and by that I mean it talks, you talked about the conversion, we have a safety um, plan that we have to maintain? The risk management plan itself is roughly, I think it was like uh, $1,800 a year as far as um, okay. purely just um, the risk management plan cost. Um, I guess I don't know if there's other implications as far as the gas versus liquid costs. But. Liquid's a lot safer than the gas. We got sure. 2,000 pounds of gas chlorine sitting there with the schools and the, the neighborhood. Yeah. It's, it's, just not a, it's not a good mix. Easy. When, when we budgeted um, for this project, we budgeted based on replacing the gas with gas at the 255, so um, yeah. it's coming out pretty comparable. Um, so there isn't a whole lot of cost. We still would need to do the chlorine improvement project. The project wasn't initiated because we wanted to switch from gas oh, to liquid. Okay. That's what I was the project missing. was initiated because the chlorine tanks and room needed to be. Uh, so either way, we're up against a decision of we have to change out the tanks. Well, we have to add another tank. What's happening is we have a 2,000 pound cylinder <coughs> and we don't have a, a when that when that's empty, yeah. we got to wait for another one to come or we got to order right. sooner and get one. So then we switch it out and we're wasting what's ever left in there. Okay. So, you know, we're spending extra money on the excess we're sending back that we're not even using because we only have room when we, originally we built that we had 150 pound cylinders and we had one, two, three, four, five, six rooms with one cylinder in and the 150 pounds were way too small as our production got larger and larger. They suck so much chlorine <laughs> that they freeze. So then we had to go to the 2,000 pound cylinder. We didn't have room for it in that room for just one tank. So that's why the one tank is there. So we've kind of just outgrown it. At the north plant, or the south plant, excuse me, we have two 2,000 pound cylinders in there. So one goes empty, it switches over, and then we can get it switched out. And so it's less about our, it's less about our tank needs to be changed out. It's more that we don't have room for a second tank to replicate what we do at the south plant. And so in, the absence of that room, we're going to switch out the style or the... We're going to liquid. Going to liquid. And it's, yes, correct. You're Safer, we don't have to pay... Okay. Yep. I was looking at it as uh, $245,000 and we're going to save $1,800 a, a year oh. of the safety <laughs> plan. And to me that... No. Okay. Makes a lot more sense. Thank you. Follow-up uh, follow question? Yeah. Uh, we had talked initially 
the new system, you're structurally the building is capable of handling the new system. You don't have to change any walls or structure. No, the initial our initial look at we're going to have to take out a ceiling and put a bigger tank in. But we found some tanks that are going to fit in the room, so structurally we don't have to change much other than the okay. door entrance. You know, pretty minimal. Sure. I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on to department reports. Public Works Engineering, April. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, members of the council, you have a report. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions for John? <laughs> John, I got a quick question. Looking at winter supplies and salt. Oh, and Jesus. <laughs> oh. Rob, why don't you take this one? <laughs> <laughs> Where do you uh, foresee? Are, are we pre-ordering stuff for this winter? I mean, are costs are prohibitive at this time? Or are we yeah, we ordered our salt in March. So we have to order our salt in the state in March. So that's all ordered. Um, no, we're ready to go. Um, we've you approved the lease of a new loader for the, for this winter. So that's all set up, ready to go. I I think we're ready. <laughs> a historic amount for a salt stand in 2024. So I got Rob a little nervous. <laughs> yeah, I had to order a little more salt, but the year before I didn't have to hard order any. So yeah. <laughs> According to the finance, we are ready for snowmageddon. <laughs> uh, Mayor Thank you. Oh. Uh, Mayor Fitzsimmons, I just have would like to highlight one thing. We do have a public open house tomorrow for the kickoff of the Westside Reconstruction Project. So that's tomorrow evening at 5:30 to allow residents um, to ask questions and provide input on that project. And that's right here. It's here at City yep. Hall. Yep. Great. Uh, fire. Mayor, members of council, in front of you, you have monthly report for fire. Um, the only other thing I'd like to add, I guess, uh, as we're 22 years out from 9-11, um, many of you have seen the fire truck and the flag hanging out in front of public safety today. Um, just really want to thank our community for all the support. It probably wasn't more than five minutes at a time today that a car didn't honk, semi, truck, uh, people stopping in, police and fire, just all the support in the community. Just really reinforced and reminded me what a great community this is. Thanks. Yeah, awesome call out. I, I'm sure like the rest of council as well, a lot of text of, wow, that's really cool what your fire is doing, police is doing. So awesome job. Um, with the pine cone, you can see it coming south from about uh, Pine Meadow Elementary, and uh, you can see it for a long ways on the south end of town. So it's a really cool tribute. Any questions for fire? Awesome. Thanks again for doing that. Police. Members of the council, you have my monthly report. Let me know if you have any questions. Any discussion on SROs? Is this highlighted for me? <laughs> yeah, um, obviously a really tough decision for cities statewide, and we did opt to keep our SROs in our schools. And I think I just like to highlight it's the circumstances for cities are different. Our MOU versus other cities having a JPA, and there was just a lot of legal stuff that other cities had to pull. Um, it's certainly, especially with area chiefs, it was not a decision based at all on like trying to keep our kids safe. Every chief out there wants to keep their kids safe. And we were able to do sort of a kind of keeping our SRO program intact. Other cities have had to adjust, but, um, are doing their version of keeping their kids safe and kids in, or, uh, and officers in schools. So mixed with that, we also had, um, two SROs very willing to try to operate under, um, uh, less than desirable circumstances and are doing so, so far so good, but we'll keep monitoring and hopefully not have to adjust and uh, still hoping on a law change here from our legislature, so. Was there oh. any additional log or dialogue about potential special session or did it get shot down? I, at last I heard the governor is out of the country, so I think there's a delay there. Um, I think there's still a lot of bipartisan support from like the chiefs organizations around the state are hearing bipartisan support to call that special session and, and switch this before February session. So there's still hope in our organizations it's gonna happen, but um, I think there's some kickback from others too. So we'll wait and see. 
I know uh, City of Sock Rapids is uh, having this discussion tonight, uh, their discussion tonight on as a council to do this or not. I said I would uh, commend our chief on his leadership through this. He's kept the Public Safety Committee uh, well abreast almost to the minute of as it dynamically changed and, and where his, his thought is at. And um, appreciate that and um, look forward to that continuing. Any other questions for PD? Thank you. City Commission updates. Not at this time. City Council Committee updates, miscellaneous business. Tim. Uh, nothing tonight. Jill. Nothing tonight. Alex. Uh, one thing, myself, um, Mayor, and some staff members were able to attend the opening of the Lions Park yesterday. Um, so I congratulate the Lions Park and everyone else that was involved in making um, the park happen and the event happen. Um, it's been open a couple weeks. I see a lot of people there and only hear great things. So congrats to all involved. Absolutely. Jed? Nothing tonight. Uh, I would echo Alex's point and then also publicly uh, owe him some gratitude. Uh, about 30 seconds before I was supposed to offer a few words, we had a uh, car accident in town that our fire department was paged out for. And so I looked at him and handed him a note card and jolted. Um, so as I mentioned before, thank you. Uh, it was awesome to see the turnout there and the support for that park for residents here that their kids have graduated and moved out of town. It wasn't a, a bunch of uh, young families there. It was, it was people that truly see the value of that park across the broad spectrum uh, rather than just little kiddos. So really awesome. Um, some of the Lions leadership was already talking to us about phase two and what they want to start doing. So it, it highlights the, the value of that private partner, private public partnership. Uh, I know Sartell Peds and some other great organizations have, have stepped up to uh, financially contribute as well. And it, uh, this park just screams success and look forward to the future of it. A couple other updates I have, uh, State of the City, we are doing tomorrow as part of the uh, monthly Sartell Chamber meeting. That's at noon at Waters Church. Um, we are taking part in the United Way Days of Caring this year. Um, area mayors are doing a volunteer with a mayor. That is September 18th through the 22nd. And uh, Sartell's got a pretty big list of volunteers already. They'll be out... I hope you know this, Peter, but they'll be out <laughs> painting fire hydrants. Um, they will be out uh, repainting the um, uh, picnic tables in the parks. And then the third project is we will be over at Val Smith repainting the ice arena or ice rink boards over there. So uh, a lot of work and uh, look forward to having local volunteers out with us. The last uh, ask I would have is we had individual tonight uh, speak and asking for some dialogue with staff if someone can follow up there. Thank you. Um, that is all I have and would look for a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned.